listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello! It's time for the animal party. Have you got your invitation? Everybody's welcome. Come to our animal party this week, and you'll be seeing Tammy Thane, uh, who is the founder of Dogs Deserve Better, which is an award-winning national nonprofit group working on behalf of America's chained and penned dogs. And so we're going to talk to her about that, but we're also going to talk to her about Mothers Against Chaining Dogs and this group of people who are unbelievable. They've actually lost children to violent dogs, some of them. Some of them, the kids were just hurt. And they've been able to come back from that and figure out that the cause of the problem was not the dog, but the fact that it was chained. And they're lobbying to change the laws all over the place. So we're going to talk to her about that. We're going to hear about what you can do in your neighborhood and why you should care if there's a dog tied up like this 24-7 or penned up, not exposed to people, not socialized. Why is this a big problem? So we're going to talk to her about that. But we're also going to go on the lighter side of this party and find out some of the good stories, find out about some of the dogs she saved and a really heartwarming book about it. So we'll be talking to her in a minute. Right now, I'm just going to fill up the hors d'oeuvres and get a drink for my guest and welcome her in, show her where to put her coat. So you all enjoy the word from our sponsors and uh, come right back and you'll hear the animal party. Come back to the party. Don't leave this party before it's over because the best is yet to come. Only losers leave the party early anyway. Party on. Back in a few. Paw Fume Dog Grooming and Finishing Spray is proud to be a new sponsor of Pet Life Radio. Paw Fume's super long-lasting sprays are available in four unique fragrances. Each Paw Fume spray is fortified with the finest conditioners and detanglers to make combing out your dog more fun. Paw Fume retails for only $2 per 6-ounce bottle. Paw Fume is available nationwide at all Dollar General and Family Dollar stores. Why pay more to have your dog smell great? Pawfume, P-A-W-F-U-M-E. It's time for school for you and your friends, your furry best friends. Train your dog the fun and easy way with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Teacher's Pet host Pia Silvani teaches you step-by-step how to train your dog the fun and easy way. You get eight 30-minute live audio training sessions, complete transcripts of each session, plus a basic training manual to get you and your dog off to a great start. Training begins the moment you bring your dog home. Teacher's Pet Sessions offers positive reinforcement training to shape your dog's behavior and encourages upbeat, enthusiastic responses to ensure that your dog will enjoy learning. Teacher's Pet Sessions dog training is fun at both ends of the leash. So listen, learn, and laugh with your dog with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Get your copy of Teacher's Pet Sessions Volume 1 today. To order, go to teacherspetsessions.com. Hi, this is Pia Silvani, your host. Bring your dog, tug toy, and treats, and get ready to have some fun. Teacherspetsessions.com. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do, and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. You're inside the VIP room. With the hottest party in town. Back to the party. Let's go. Hello, we're back at the animal party. Come on in. I hope you got your party hat on. Today we've got with us Tammy Thane, founder of Dogs Deserve Better. Welcome, Tammy. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the party. Thanks, Deb. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's good to have you. I'm sure there are dogs that you've met that would think, 
that you are the party. They go from a life of imprisonment and isolation. And when someone like you comes along and saves them from that, life just opens up. So let's talk a little bit about why did Mothers Against Chaining Dogs start? What happened there? Uh, well, it's actually Mothers Against Dog Chaining. <laughs> okay. So it can be confusing because we, we started out saying Mothers Against Chained Dogs, and then we thought, no, that sounds like we're against the dogs themselves, which, of course, we're not. But uh, that started because we were seeing, I had started Dogs Deserve Better, and, you know, over the course of the first few years, we were seeing how many children were being attacked by chained dogs, and we were putting two and two together much faster than the media was or, you know, your everyday citizen. So we thought, oh, we really got to start an outreach program towards these mothers because what they've been through is hell and they need to realize, you know, where the actual blame lies. Not that, not that the dogs, you know, the dogs did do what they did. We, you know, you can't gloss over that, but the reason that they've done what they've done and the people, the fact that it's we humans who are chaining them outside that are causing them to become aggressive, you know, it's a, it's a big liability on, uh, the part of the humans involved. So we really wanted to uh, start getting the, that made it known, making it known. And it's really working in some ways with the media because we're starting to see more and more reports from media where like chain dog attacks child instead of, you know, just where they're specific. child. Or, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, usually if well, it's not a pit people... bull, it'll just say dog attacks child. But if it's a pit bull, it'll say pit bull attacks child, you know. And Or so if it even looks like a pit bull. Sometimes it's yeah. not a pit bull and they say Sometimes pit bull and they say body. And, no, yeah. yeah. But when you talk about children, people should understand that children are disproportionately affected by this. Children, when they're bit, Oftentimes, 77% of the time when a child is bit, it's to the face. So that's neck, that's throat, that's face, that's marking, scarring for life. This is not the little nip on the finger. This is serious stuff. So, And a lot of times, most of the time when kids are bit, they're kids about age 8, 7 to about 10, 11, and they're usually boys. And what happens is they see the dog, they're tempted by the dog, they want to deal with the dog. The dog may even look delighted to see them because he's so bored, but the dog doesn't know how to deal with kids. So the kid comes within reach of that tethered dog or that penned up dog, and the dog doesn't know that this is not a threat, that this is not an enemy. And the kid's in trouble really fast. People are probably surprised to know that most of the time a dog bites it's not a stranger. When we talk about victims going to hospital, it's only 10 or 20% of the time that they didn't know the dog at all. Most of the time, the dog's making a mistake. This is a family friend or a family or a neighbor or a kid next door, and the dog just wasn't taught properly. So it's really, really serious. If there's a dog like this in your neighborhood, what should people be doing? Well, um, the best thing that anybody can do is change the laws because then you're not just helping the dog right near you, but you're helping every dog in your city or county or state for that matter. So that's, you know, that's the really big step. Um, to help an individual dog, if you see, you need to know your laws, first of all, because there are places with laws against chaining. You know, if it's against the law and they're chaining the dog, great. You know, it should be a pretty open and shut case. But if there isn't laws against it, you have to see if they're breaking any other laws, such as shelter, food, or water. And if you see something, take a picture. If the dog oh, yeah. is lame or limping, has sores, is missing fur, has a closed eye, take a picture. Because take the authorities picture, need video. proof. They're not allowed in there unless you've got proof. But yeah, help them out a little bit. But um, So what you're saying about the law is some places the law is you can't chain a dog at all. Other places yeah. it's only at night. You can't chain them maybe after 10 till 6 in the morning or some rule like that. Other mm-hmm. places there's a limit on how long. Maybe it's four hours at a time. So there's different rules. And then there's places where there's no rule at all. You can chain them up as long as you want. And that's where you want to change the laws. So if you don't have laws that help this problem in your area, you can go to dogsdeservebetter.org. And there's a section right on the website, Get Laws. It's that simple. Click on it, and you'll find all kinds of different levels of laws, you know, for the state, for the city, for the, all this. And so, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel on this. this. This is really, that's what Tammy's doing for you. She's getting it all there for you so you can help. But these dogs, dogs want to be with people. And so they're tied up. They're alone. They're vulnerable. You know, I heard about, and we talked about the wolves, how there was a whole lot of people in Alaska letting, tying up their dogs in their backyards, even though they knew a pack of wolves was coming and eating them. And night after night after night, people were listening to the sounds of tied up dogs being killed. Well, that's not just Alaska. Here there's bears. There's coyotes in most of, the, of North America. There's alligators in the South. You tie up a dog, even if it's not 
prey it thinks it's going to be. So you're already setting it up in trouble. And you're not protecting yourself. I mean, let's talk about, you know what? We're going to go for a break. When we come back, we're going to tell you why tying up a dog does not make you safer. It makes you more in danger. If you want your dog to protect your house, don't tie it up. So listen to our sponsors and come back to the party. We're going to blow your mind with some new information about chain dogs that will change your life forever. Yet to come. Stick around. Give your dog some thought. With Dog Thoughts, it's the iPhone application that everyone's talking about. Hey, what do you think of this? A man in Davis, California says he's invented an application for the iPhone that claims it can read your dog's mind. Huh? No, it's true. No, I read about it on my cat's Twitter page. That's what I did. Jay Leno talked about it, CBS reported on it, and now you can see what all the buzz is about. Created just for dog lovers, Dog Thoughts makes taking photos of your furry best friend more fun. Shake your dog and read his mind. <gasps> on your iPhone, of course. Take a pic of your pup, shake your phone, and watch as his thoughts appear on the screen. Does he have a bone to pick with you, or is he having a tail-wagging day? Get your Dog Thoughts iPhone app today. Just 99 cents. Go to PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. That's PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in paparazzi, candid pictures of you and your pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Aquariums and pond keeping are among the most popular of all hobbies in the United States and throughout the world. In fact, fish are probably the most numerous pet in people's homes and in their businesses. In Aquarium Mania, we'll learn more about the secret and not-so-secret life of fish and other inhabitants, the basics of good aquarium keeping, the complexities of the aquarium industry, and the science and art that surround this fascinating hobby. I'm your host, Roy Anong, and I'd like to thank you for joining us. Aquarium Mania. Every week, on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet you're, you're, you're inside the VIP room. With the hottest party in town. Back to the party. Let's go. Okay, welcome back to the party. We've got Tamara Thane from Dogs Deserve Better. And this is an organization which is all about getting those tied up, mournful, penned up dogs all alone, hour after hour. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. With nothing to do and no way to know who's friend or enemy. Getting those dogs back into human life, back into dog life, giving them a pack again. So let's talk to her about it. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the party. All right, Tammy. Hi. Hello. So <laughs> let us know, why is it so important for these dogs? If you want a good protection dog, Tying it up. What, what is, I mean, I just don't, for me, it means that the burglar, the robber knows exactly how to get around the dog, right? I mean, Absolutely. it just. Absolutely. I mean, most of the time they're way in the back of the yard, but even if they're not, you know, all they have to figure out is how far this dog's chain reaches, go around that, and they can go right in your back door, right in your front door, right in your window, and take everything you have. But if you have dogs inside your house, they have no idea how big they are, how aggressive they are, 
will these dogs bite them or not, they are much better protectors inside your house than left alone, left chained outside your house. Well, and sometimes people think, well, he'll bark. That'll work. You know, even <laughs> it doesn't work. It clearly announces to everyone that the dog is unable to protect the house. That's all it's saying. It's, yeah. It announces to the coyotes and the bears and the wolves and the other animals that this dog, because he never moves, the sound is always coming from the same place. They know they can get around him. They know they can raid your garbage. They know they can steal your cats. They know they can get in and harm you because the dog is rendered defenseless. And as far as uh, people who might want to do you harm, it's the same thing. The neighbor who cares about you is not going to call 911 when your dog is barking, if your dog is barking every day and every night. Now, if you've got a dog that you love and you keep in the house and then the day it goes crazy and is barking its head off, then your neighbor will call the police because he knows there's something wrong and the dog knows there's something wrong. And that's what's key about all this is that if a dog is tied up alone, it's not learning. It's not learning that, you know, that's neighbor Sally, she's a friend, and that's grandma, she's a friend, and that's the kid from next door. Don't worry about kids. Don't worry about strollers. Don't worry about kids fetching balls they've lost over the fence. It's not learning any of that. So it's bored, and it's going to make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And unsocialized, you know, they don't know how to live with humans at all, which makes them much more likely to bite. So there are there are many, many reasons not to chain your dog, and aggression is one of them, a big one. So today, while I was thinking about coming on this show, I was dropping off my little one at preschool, and someone knocks on the window of my car, knock, 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 can I talk to you for a second? And I'm thinking, okay, what's it going to be? And right away, she said, do you ever take dogs in? Do you take homeless dogs? And I said, well, what's this about? And she said, well, the people have relocated, and the grandparents are living in the house, and the dogs are too much for the grandparents. So these dogs are yellow labs. They're a few years old. They're really friendly. They love each other, bonded together. But now what's happened is every single day, this lady that I was talking to, she's their cleaning lady, she goes there, takes the dogs out of their tiny kennels, walks them over to their tethers, ties them up, and then leaves for the day. And then at night, she comes back and does the same thing in reverse. And she's trying to talk these people into selling the dogs or giving them up or getting rid of them because it's not fair to these dogs. She says they are so depressed. They've gone from being part of the pack to being in prison for a crime they didn't commit, in isolation for no reason, tethered so they can't even play with each other all alone, all day, in the country where there are lots of threats to them. And I just... I mean, it makes me sick to think about it. And so I like it that she's trying to treat them with kindness, right? She's not fighting them. She's gone to the people and she's talking to them and she suggested that they go to the SPCA and she suggested they put ads in the paper. So is that what, does your organization do a lot of that? Well, we do, yeah. We do a lot of rescue. I mean, our goal is always to have the people educated so that they'll bring their own dogs and take responsibility for their own dogs. But if they're not willing to do that and they're willing to give them up to rescue, then we will... Um, search diligently for a foster home or another rescue to get them into. So, yeah, I mean, we take a lot of responsibility in that area. We probably, we probably get about three to five hundred dollars, five hundred, five hundred dogs off chains every year through all all of our area reps. So, and then we foster them and we get them new homes where they can be part of the family. Now, these ladies who started it, I mean, can you tell me a story, one of their stories? Yeah, well, the the girl who first started working with me on Mothers Against Dog Chaining, and she hasn't, she stepped back from what she's doing because she had two other little kids and she kind of went a different direction. But it's a very sad story um, in South Carolina where there were all these Great Danes chained outside and her little girl was, I think, two years old. And she wandered into um, the space where these dogs were and she was killed. So, uh yeah, and so we had put her picture on our website, and uh, she came to us then and said, I want to help. And uh, she went with us to try to get a law against chaining in her county, and they still, despite her, and there was another child just months after her killed, too, by chain dogs in the exact same county, and they still do not have a law against chaining. So, you know, it's it's sad because this girl really did want to make a difference, and, you know, she didn't wasn't successful in her county, but um, I still think her story probably educated a lot of people. And there's another mother who's very, very on board with us now, and her son wasn't killed. He, um, she's in Michigan, I believe, and her, um, his, her son was bitten very severely on the arm by a chained pit bull, and she actually felt so bad for the dog. You know, she had got pictures of the dog living in this 
kennel and very like in the basement in this horrible little chained in this horrible little kennel in the basement and then when he was outside he was chained and that's when he bit her son but you know she realized that this pit bull had no life whatsoever and she really did not blame the dog at all which was you know very very big of her i mean she just understood that it was the poor ownership and caretaking of this dog that put her son in that position well you know pit bulls get blamed a lot and part of the reason is because of their power. It's estimated that if a pit bull bites you and he wants to hurt you, one out of 16 times you're going to end up in the hospital or worse. Now, if a German shepherd bites you and he wants to hurt you, one out of 156 times you're going to get in the hospital or worse. And with a Doberman, one out of 296 times you're going to end up. And so, so it's all about the power. It's not that these dogs are meaner or more vicious or lockjaw or anything like that, but they are more likely to be tied up. They are more likely to not be socialized. They are more likely to be owned by people who have criminal records. In fact, one study shows that um, dog owners with risky pets were more than twice as likely to have convictions for domestic violence and crimes involving children. So we are talking about not the dog's fault. The dog was born a sweet little puppy, a nursing little baby that wouldn't hurt anybody. But somewhere along the line, it got sent outside and ignored. And it didn't learn the right lessons. And so I think pit bulls are overrepresented, but also sometimes misidentified, um, as are Rottweilers. But really, those are the dogs we have to spend. The tougher the dog, the more important it is to socialize it with everybody and get it out. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that's, you know, the biggest thing. I mean, like, Rotties can be some of the best dogs in the world if they're properly socialized. You know, but what I've seen with um, child attacks by Rotties who were chained they almost always ch attack the child from the rear and um, pull downward. You know, I don't know why. I guess it's just something that's inbred in them. But, you know, that doesn't happen when you have a Roddy who's well socialized and brought up with a family. I mean, you would never see something like that. I've got one statistic here that says half the kids in the U.S. will be bitten at some point or other by a dog by age 12. Now, I've got all these exclamation marks all around it saying, I don't know about this statistic. Because I've got other statistics that show me that kids are more likely to get hurt in a playground. The chances of being killed by a dog by anyone in America is less than being killed by a deer. You know, there's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of things out there. So we have to put it into perspective. There are a lot of dogs in our homes and our lives, and most of them aren't doing anything wrong. But this group that's tied up and not trained and not socialized, when the tie breaks, when the fence falls, when somebody sneaks in or out that's when you get the problem. And that's what you're trying to draw attention to. So let's talk about your websites a little bit. How do people get more information? Where do they go? For Dogs Deserve Better, they definitely want to go to dogsdeservebetter.org. And um, that will teach you, you know, everything you want to know. It shows success stories. Um, there's a place to donate. We're a nonprofit organization. And it tells you how to be an area rep. We have area reps who work on this in our, their own areas all around the country. So it tells you how to be an area rep, what you can do to volunteer, how to get laws, which is very important. So there are many, many things uh, that people can do there. The Mothers Against Dog Chaining site is specifically to highlight the condition of how dogs harm children when they're chained. So it's completely on that and it has all, all kind of attacks on there that we, and I have to say that these are the only the attacks that we find out about. You know, they have right. to be serious enough that the attack makes the paper and then we pick that up through our Google alerts and things like that. And that's another reason why pit bulls are so overrepresented. If you're attacked by a multipoo, you're probably not going to make a report. Exactly. That's just like, yeah. You know, but a multipoo can hurt attack. a kid. There's no yeah. question. And so all dogs need to be trained and socialized and taught who's friend and who's foe. It's, it's not just the big ones. Where can they get the book? And let's, let's talk about the book because I think we've, we've talked a little bit about the negative side here. Mm -hmm. But you've got a book out now with beautiful stories, right? It's called Unchain My Heart. Uh, dogs Deserve Better Rescue Stories of Courage, Compassion, and Caring. It just came out, just came, uh, it's hot off the press, just got it in last Monday. And uh, it has 40 of some of our best rescue stories. So they're all happy ending stories. We didn't put any of our sad stuff in here. And of course they start out a little sad because the dog is chained and what we go through, you know, there are sad parts in every story because what we go through and the, duck, the condition of the dog, but then the endings are happy. So they're, it's very heartwarming. It's a great book to curl up on a winter night beside your fireplace with your dog and tell your dog how lucky he or she is that they're not living out there like that, you know, so. 
Uh, what, got can a, you tell us about one of the one of the dogs featured? One of the dogs, and I guess old family, new family, featured in the book. Yeah, well, this is one of my my stories, so I'm most familiar with it. But there was a case late, locally just just three months ago, actually, um, right before the book, just when we were putting the book together. But there was I got a report of I was in a grocery store, and I, I swear I just I, the title of the story is I draw dog talk because when I'm somewhere that just people just start talking about dogs and I'll look around like, am I wearing dog stuff or something? How, you know, how does this dog hair? <laughs> but, uh, this, Your bumper I this, sticker. I hear this girl telling someone that there are two abandoned shepherds near her. And, and so I went up and I, and she said they were starving. So I went up and I said, you know, are these dogs chained outside? And she said, yeah, they are. And, uh, so I got the information from her and I went over there and it turns out there's not two dogs there, but four dogs there. Wow. And it's a place that's totally overrun with garbage, the typical place where you really see chain dogs. And I said, yep, this is it. As soon as I saw the garbage and the old cars and, you know, it looks like a trash heap. So I, uh, I went up and I knocked on the door and nobody was living there because it was just the door, the one door was kind of open even and I just course didn't try to go in but I I went up and I documented the situation there were two very skinny shepherds and there was this adorable little we named her Fufu Cuddly Poop she's like a little white dog probably like a Spitz Palm mix or something Mm -hmm. and she was in this um, pen and she was blind and deaf and she was covered in fleas and her ears were full of this black gunk. And, I mean, my heart just broke when I saw her. I went into her pen. I realized she, and I was talking to her, and she wasn't she wasn't Seeing responding. you, hearing you, right. She couldn't see me or hear me. And uh, I went up to her, and when she finally smelled me, she got afraid because she didn't know me. And she ran in. She right. didn't even have a doghouse. She ran in this crate, and she was in this crate, like, barking like she was going to scare me off, <laughs> you know. And Aww. I thought, you poor little thing. I mean, if I wanted to do harm to you, you know, you wouldn't have a chance. So, um, but it was, turned out to be a great happy ending story. And maybe I'm not going to tell the uh, listeners how it turned out to be happy. They need a book to see why. But right. it was okay. a happy ending for for uh, those dogs. That's one. So how many dogs do you think you've helped in the time you've been doing this? Uh, I mean, indirectly you won't know, but directly. Yeah, indirectly yeah. I don't know. Um, that came through my own house that I personally fostered has been over 100. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. I did about 100 cats, literally 100, actually it was 96, in uh, year 2000 from a cat hoarding rescue place. You know, we, the SPCA was involved in it, the bylaw people, the conservation people. It was such a procedure. And that's, oh. I think people don't realize sometimes that it can be like that. You know, you, you talk, and the only reason we were able to go in there and apprehend these cats was because the woman was letting us. She was a little bit mentally not balanced. In, you know, you'd have to be, to allow cats to live in that state over a hundred of them literally cannibalizing each other and starving for food and and horrible, horrible, horrible circumstances that no one ever wants to see. A couple of horses also suffering terribly on our property. But there was food, there was water, there was shelter. So the SBCA couldn't go in there unless they agreed. And so it was a question of, you know, really every day talking with her, manipulating her, getting her to agree, all these people coming together. And when she'd let us on the property in a mass way, getting in there and trapping and catching everything we possibly could. And, you know, lots of volunteer foster homes and trips to the vet. And every cat had to be vaccinated, neutered, spayed, all this sort of stuff. ID tagged, kept for a while and then found a home or re-released it. You know, it's a big job. And that's what you're involved in for the dogs, right? I mean, it's huge. Yeah, every day. I mean, we have these area reps all around the country, and so we're, you know, paying for vet bills, you know, different vets all over the place, and they're finding foster homes, and it's a, yeah, it's a big job all the time. And if, if they won't you know, give up the dogs to- and, and they're breaking the laws, then we've got to try to work with the local, you know, law authorities to try to get them to do their job, which isn't always easy. So, yeah, it can be very difficult. Well, you have two situations. Sometimes you have a situation where the law enforcement agencies are maybe underfunded or don't have the time or don't want to deal with it, and you have to push them. And other times you have the situation where they want to act and they can't. But the kind of situation you're talking about where you have to push them, what do you recommend for that? I know you've got some, you're using the power of the web for this, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's getting those pictures and video, and you start circulating them. You know, you highlight the condition of the dog, and you tell people who to call. You put it in an email, and you just start circulating that email, and they get so many phone calls that they actually almost always go out and do their job then because they're pretty much shamed into it. And, you know, it's great 
and most, I mean, everybody tries not to do that, but if it gets to that point, you know, that dog has to be helped, and the people responsible for doing that have got to do their job. So that's how we harness the power of the Internet, absolutely. Yeah, and it is powerful. Have you found it's, it's working for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not across the board. I had a case here lately with two St. Bernards where, um, well, you know, by the time by the time I tried to get help for the dogs, basically I tried to get help through the police. They wouldn't. They refused to do anything. And uh, what they actually did was go tip off the guy who went out and killed the dog. So <laughs> that was, you know, oh, how, how that shit. situation went. But the uh, local humane society there did take a lot of flack because they were called about these dogs before I went out there and did nothing. Said they were fine, and this one dog couldn't really barely walk. You know, he'd had a stroke or something, and he was like floundering all over the place. And it was a very sad situation to see. So that was a situation where oh, you know it didn't work, but we still we still brought so much awareness mm-hmm, to this mm-hmm. case through the internet and the video that I posted that people were just absolutely disgusted with the behavior of the local police department. I mean, I got them on video saying, telling me to come home and things like that. They wouldn't even look at the dog. You know, there's been some good news here. So maybe I'll share it with you because I don't know if you've heard about it. But recently, it's kind of a landmark case here because our laws really are confined to dog. If the dog has shelter, food, water, doesn't need immediate emergency care, then the SPCA can't do anything. So that's the way it works here. But in one case, the dog that was uh, confined and penned had such a bad ear infection, I mean bad, 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 that they could smell it from two meters away. And so even on the other side of the fence, and they apprehended the dog. They rescued the dog. They got the ears treated. They rehomed the dog. But it's a landmark case because usually you have to show, you know, missing leg bleeding all over the concrete. Mm -hmm. It has to be so, so urgent. And usually an ear infection wouldn't do it. But an ear infection is very, very painful, eventually leads to deafness. I mean, it's a, you can't leave that. You know, it's horrible. So I'm so glad it was so stinky that they could smell it. (laughs) There's something else. Yeah, I know. (laughs) There's there's something else going on here, which is really odd. And I just want to alert everybody to it. If this, if this show today really interests you, you might want to keep up on the news that's going on right now. Uh, last week in Toronto, biggest city in Canada, the Humane Society of all places, okay, the Toronto Humane Society, the pound, got charged and director, like some of the people there are being charged. The police were involved. The SPCA was involved. Animals were apprehended for cruelty at the Humane Society. Wow. So that's a big situation. And is it political? And is it just one organization versus the other? Is it really true that dogs were dying and suffering and in pain and neglected there? And so that's all going to come up in the next little while. So that's an interesting case to keep an eye out for. But I do think that, you know, these animals, they are incredible communicators, way better than we are. They understand so many more human words. Just think of that. How many words of dog do we get compared to the amount of human words they understand? And they can speak with other dogs worldwide and foxes and wolves and coyotes and wild dogs. And they can also understand cats pretty well, better than we can. You know, all their prey they can understand really well, like squirrels. And so they're really, really good communicators. So to put them in a situation where they have nobody to communicate with and they're all alone and they're tethered, it's just so beyond cruel. I mean, in the wild... A big dog would travel miles, not feet. It's just so cruel. Yeah, because in the wild, they would leave their den, they go out to find food, and then they come back. And here, they don't have any of that. They have no pack. They have no exercise. Sometimes no they have job. no food. Yeah, no, no job. job. I mean, in the wild, they're hunting, but in a mm-hmm. regular family, they're doing things like retrieving or protecting you or being your companion and, you know, all the things that you don't see that they're doing. Like, the fact that you have a dog in the house and he's not barking, means you know there's no threat. It means your heart, your body can, can, you know, chemically, physically, you know on a real primitive level that you can be relaxed. Okay, that's a huge thing your dog's giving you. And that's partly why a person who has a heart attack is told to get a dog. Because Marty Becker's book shows if you have a dog, you're eight times more likely to be alive a year after a heart attack than if you don't. And it's not all about the exercise because little dogs didn't, big dogs didn't matter if you were the one walking it or not, you know, it's about that security. So bring your dog in the house, let him give you, let him do these jobs for you. You know, why not? That's why we have dogs in the first place. And it it really, it's so much easier to train a dog than to deal with all this. I mean, the kind of destruction these backyard dogs do, it's so costly. 
so much cheaper to just train the dog and have them in the house. Have a doggy door. If you want to know that, you're, that if someone comes into your yard, the dog's going to go meet it, train your dog well to like you and love you and be with you, and then have a doggy door. So if someone breaks in, he's going to fly out that door and chase that person away and then come back in the house and protect you. That's the point, right? Yep, totally. Yeah, I have two doggy doors here, so they work really well. I mean, when someone comes up my driveway, all the dogs run out. <laughs> Of course, I have well, what, a fence, but, you know, they're safe out there, but they, um, they run out to see what is going on. What do you say to people who argue with you who say, you know what, uh, I'm not bringing my dog in. He likes it outside. He, li- he likes being tied out there. I tell them that they would have to prove that to me by getting a doggy door and letting the dog choose, I said, because right now your dog has no choice. Your dog isn't getting to choose, and I don't believe that you're telling me the truth. That's pretty much exactly what I tell them. Well, you know, and... I- with your foster dogs, isn't it true that that's not true? You take these dogs who well, yeah, really, they don't even know the house, right? I mean, they every don't know single you. dog I've fostered has, the people told me my dog prefers it outside. But when I bring them to my house, I teach them the doggy door. I, they soon realize they can choose whether they're inside or out, and they are always where I am, always. I mean, they'll run outside to go to the bathroom, maybe sniff around for five minutes, and then they're back in. If I'm working... They are um, laying around my desk. You know, right now I'm um, upstairs and, you know, with the door shut so that I can hear the interview. And I can guarantee you I, if I walked outside, there'd be at least three or four dogs laying in my hall, <laughs> you know, Yeah. because they just want to be where I am. And I think that's something people don't realize that, yeah, okay, your dog is really happy when you go outside with it. But that yeah. doesn't mean it wants to be alone in the yard by itself all day. You know, yeah. I, it doesn't matter if your yard is triple the size of a regular city lot. Unless there's something like a squirrel for it to hunt or somebody throwing a frisbee or a tennis ball, there's nothing for an adult dog to do in a backyard. Bring another dog in, okay, now you've got a play session. But alone, I mean, you know, you stick a grown up back there, what's he going to do? He's going to look for a book, a toy, a person to play with. You know, they just don't entertain themselves by themselves like that. So I think there's a mistaken idea because when they go out with the dog, the dog seems really happy to be outside, but that doesn't mean he wants to be out alone. Exactly, yeah. And if, you know, if I were to spend the night in a tent out there, they'd all spend the night in a tent with me. So it's really not a question of outside versus in. It's really more a question of where are you, and that's what's important to the dog. So tell me again the name of the book. The name of the book is Unchain My Heart, Dogs Deserve Better Rescue Stories of Courage, Compassion, and Caring. It's available and where can they get our website. It's available from our website. Uh, you can also get it on Amazon.com. And, uh, so, so that's Dogs Deserve Better website? Is that the one you're talking about? DogsDeserveBetter.org. Okay. It has its own website that will take you directly to the book. It's called UnchainMyHeart.info. Okay, so, uh, Unchain My Heart on Amazon, Unchain My Heart on Amazon. That's what you guys need to know. So if you've got someone in your family, maybe you're trying to teach social responsibility to some kids or activism or caring or making a difference. This would be a good book to read to your kids, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. I read, and it's, you know, it's all these short stories. So you can read two stories to your child at night, you know, before bed, and then uh, read them two more stories the next night. So it's not a book that, you know, you have to be completely engrossed and read it from co- cover at one time you can pick it up and start you know with the next story so it's very it's very uh, good in that way and yeah we were concerned maybe they'd all sound the same and they're totally 40 complete different stories from each other so it's really a fun book I think is there every kind of dog in there big dogs little dogs foo-foo dogs oh, yeah. tough dogs yeah yeah absolutely and every kind of person too I bet yeah <laughs> yes yes it's you know it's because it's all from all our different reps so they all approach things from different ways and People are different from each other, and I think this book shows, you know, how differently they approach uh, getting a dog off a chain and what what they end up doing with the dog later. So it's pretty cool. And it fits with this trend that I'm seeing all over the place. People are buying presents for people that are more than just a gift. This is something where you feel like you're doing good. Some of the money goes to help chain dogs and people against dog chaining. And um, at the same time, the book isn't just fluff. It's actually going to make a difference for the person who gets it. Absolutely. It's going to make them yeah. feel good. So we, and, you know, we make more money if they buy it from our site. So if, you know, if they want more money to go to dogs, is are better. They'd want to buy it from unchainmyheart.info because Amazon takes a, their cut of everything, okay. which is quite a large cut. But it's definitely available on Amazon. So, okay. Um, yeah, but well, and dogs deserve time. better. If they go there, they can see pictures, right? Photos oh, of dogs who've been saved. Absolutely. There's oh, all right. kinds of success okay. stories. And, yeah. So next time somebody's complaining, oh, there's no good news, go here. There's good news. There's being dogs rescued every day. 
Well, thank you so much, Tamara. It's been great having you on again. And I hope you'll come back in the future. Thank you for all the good work you're doing for those tied up dogs. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Bye. Bye Bye-bye. All right, everybody. She's leaving the party. She's getting her shoes. I'm helping her find her coat. She's getting all those chain dogs. They've been running around the house. Of course, they wouldn't go anywhere else without her. So she'll get them all up, rustled up, and get on out of here. And in the meantime, I just want to leave you with another tip. Last time I was on, I told you about all the Christmas and holiday and Hanukkah tips. The big one being use small candles and don't leave flames with pets. Make sure the flames are out before the grown-up leaves the room. And also anchoring the Christmas tree was a big one I mentioned and watching what you put in the base, making sure that kids and dogs and cats can't drink from the base. But um, no chocolate. But the new one I want to give you today is about flowers. So flowers can be toxic too, particularly lilies, tiger lily, Asian lily, Japanese show lily, stargazer, Casablanca. All of these can cause kidney failure in cats. And they seem to attract cats. They smell good and they taste good. So you got one in a vase on your counter, your cat's going to eat it. So don't. Just re-gift it. Get it out of there. Give it to somebody who doesn't have pets. Or better yet, don't buy them at all. In addition, some common yuletide plants like mistletoe, holly berries, they can be toxic to pets. Usually they won't eat it, but they can be toxic. They'll cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Oh, and there's nothing like a little vomiting and diarrhea when you're having guests coming over and you open the door. Hello, everybody. <laughs> no, we don't want that. Plus, the pets will be in pain. So we want to make sure that, you know, use artificial flowers or use flowers you know aren't toxic. Cedar from the garden, things like that if you live out here. But just be really careful with the chocolate this time of year. Chocolate is a toxin to dogs. Go without tinsel. If you can go without tinsel, you'll be doing all your pets, especially your cats, a favor. Tinsel is nasty. So stay away from that and um, have a really safe holiday, everybody. I'll be back soon with another show. If you want to send me pictures of your pet and you have a question to ask, we're going to be having a psychic on in the new year. And he's going to be doing pet readings. But I need to receive pictures that show the pet facing the camera, both eyes shown, really well lit so he can really read the face and the eyes and then you just send me the picture email it to deborah at pet life radio and um, all you do is send me the picture with your question and please put the subject heading of your email please put pet readings so i know what to do with it and then we'll be asking tim link your question it might be a question like is my cat happy Does my dog like the new house? Why won't my cat eat? Why won't my dog go to the park anymore? I don't know. It could be anything like that. Something that's troubling you. You want him to read your pet? Send it to me and we'll do reading soon. Okay, everybody. Be good to your pets and come back to the next party. Party on with your animals. Have a great week. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.